Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Kim Conaty and I'm the Stephen and Anne Ames Curator of Drawings and Prints at the Whitney. I'm very happy to be here with you this evening for our program Print and Process After Johns, which is organized in conjunction with the exhibition Jasper Johns Mind Mirror on view simultaneously here in New York at the Whitney and at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I hope many of you have had the chance to see this exhibition at one or both venues, or will have the chance to do so before it closes soon on February 13th. As we begin, I'd like to note that this event is being live captioned um, thanks to Jamie at Sign Nexus. If you'd like to enable the captioning feature, please click on the transcript option or CC button at the bottom of your Zoom window. In addition, tonight's program is being recorded and the recording will be accessible afterwards through our YouTube channel if you'd like to share or rewatch. I'm thrilled to be here this evening with three brilliant artists, Khalil Robert Irving, Matt Saunders, and Shabalala Self for a conversation that will take Johns' work as a springboard, a way to explore broader and perhaps different questions around print in contemporary practice. One of the great opportunities in studying an artist's work in a large scale retrospective is the chance to see works across time, to see the iterations and evolutions, experimentation, and also endurance. And here I'll show you just a few installation views from the Whitney presentation. For me, one of the most exciting aspects of John's work and one that is highlighted in the exhibition from the start, as you can see on this opening wall of prints, is the fascinating and pervasive role printmaking plays in it, specifically how processes inherent to printmaking, like the capacity to replicate motifs, to play with mirroring and image reversals, to separate and assemble color, have driven his work across all mediums. And as he has explained, um, for, for him, for Johns, the process of printmaking, quote, makes your mind work in a different way. In thinking about tonight's conversation and how ideas associated with print inform so many artist practices today, I've been inspired by art historian Jennifer Roberts's recent lectures titled Contact, the Art and Pull of Print, which were made as part of the National Gallery of Arts A.W. Mellon lectures. In them, Roberts explores prints through their making, through their maneuvers and operations, pressure, separation, reversal, strain, interference, rather than simply as products of these processes. And here you're seeing a few great images of John's making prints um, over, over many years from the early 60s through just a few years ago. Considering print through these more expansive terms as Roberts demonstrates, really allows us to see more keenly the ways in which print thinking may inform modes of painting, sculpture, or even time-based media. And this is a space that we hope to explore more tonight with Khalil, Shabalala, and Matt, all of whom work across and between mediums, but hold some of this print thinking throughout. Um, before I introduce our guests, I want to make a quick plug for an upcoming Whitney program for anyone here interested in learning more about prints through making them. As part of the Whitney's Open Studio From Home series, you're invited to a free online program hosted by the Robert Blackburn Printmaking Workshop here in New York that will explore the Collagraph printmaking method using at-home materials. Um, so this will be done over Zoom. And also um, for those of you who don't know the name Robert Blackburn, um, he was a master printer at the um, printer publisher Universal Limited Art Editions, also known as ULAE, where he worked with Johns on his earliest prints from before setting up his own shop um, in the city. And so we've had this wonderful collaboration with the workshop throughout the course of this exhibition. And this program will take place on Saturday, February 5th from 11 a.m. to 12, and you may register on our website. And now back to tonight's program. We'll start the evening with short presentations from each of the artists who will speak about their own practices in relation to print, and then we'll have a conversation together. We'll also reserve time at the end for questions from you, our audience, and you can send yours along to us using the Q&A feature in Zoom. 
I'll now introduce the artists in the order in which they'll be speaking. Here we'll see some of them popping up. Um, Matt Saunders is an interdisciplinary artist who lives between New York and Cambridge, Massachusetts, where he's professor of art, film, and visual studies at Harvard University. He received his MFA in painting and printmaking at the Yale School of Art, following a BA at Harvard in visual and environmental studies. And his work has been featured in solo museum exhibitions at the Renaissance Society in Chicago, Tate Liverpool, and the St. Louis Art Museum. Shabalala Self is a painter based in New Haven and Hudson, New York. She received her BA from Bard College and her MFA from the Yale School of Art. Her exhibition, Shabalala by Myself, was presented at the Baltimore Museum of Art in 2021, and her work has been featured in previous solo exhibitions at the ICA Boston in 2020 and the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles in 2019. Thanks for the cheering, Khalil. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Khalil Robert Irving is currently based in St. Louis, where he also received his MFA from the Sam Fox School of Design and Visual Art at Washington University, following a BFA in art history and ceramics from the Kansas City Art Institute. In December 2021, Irving opened his first museum solo exhibition, Projects Khalil Robert Irving at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And he recently participated in the new museum triennial Softwater Hard Stone, among several other group exhibitions, including two recently at the Whitney, Making Knowing Craft and Art 1950 to 2019, and Nothing is So Humble, Prints from Everyday Objects. Um, and so now, um, thank you all for being here. Thanks to our audience for tuning in. And I will turn it over to Matt to begin. Thank you all for coming. I can't believe I'm cursed to go first here. Um, I just wanna say first, thank you. And I am so honored to share this space with two artists, a curator and an institution that I love deeply. So I'm, I'm really delighted to be here. Um, maybe we can have the first slide. Yes, great. I mean, I, I don't know what instruction you guys got. Um, Kim asked me to um, talk about John's a little bit and talk about my work. So I, I rushed in a panic down to the Whitney uh, to try to walk through and think about the places in that show, which I had been to you know, several times where he's thinking in a printerly way. I was looking for places that resonated with my work and especially places that weren't exactly prints. So these are just my snapshots um, of, that, of that visit. But interestingly, I landed on what ended up being the, the image for this talk, which is this image of two hands, a lithograph. Um, two hands, which of course are actually the same hand. It's the rotation, which is making the difference, difference in a kind of sameness. Um, you know, and this really resonated with me for the way that it, it embodies so many kind of core, to borrow the, the word that um, my friend Jennifer Roberts has already, um, has been cited, stating earlier, maneuvers of printmaking, transfer, repetition, mirroring, reversal. And of course, another detail I love in this print um, is if you, you can't read in the slide at this distance, but the hands are labeled and, one, and they're labeled backwards. And one is labeled soap and one is labeled oil. And that's so John's to me, you know, it's completely matter of fact about printmaking but incredibly weird and evocative in this space with all his other work. And I think it's indicative of his general curiosity about the techniques. Um, no, I'm gonna scratch that, about the, the specifics and the maneuvers of, of print and just kind of running left to right, some things that were going through my mind about, about John's relationship to print or maybe what he brings to the table that I feel um, close to is there's, an, there's a continuous movement of images. Images are passing through the work from one piece to the next across, gen, across decades. And this capacity for things to just move and repeat and replicate and play out. But one of the things which is really important to, to point out is that where they land, they're always incredibly specific. That an image is never without um, a body. And so I'm really interested in the way that by moving through prints, by moving these motifs like the flag, through different prints, he embodies them in different ways and he gives them a specificity that comes from the materials and the kind of encounter. Um, even this image of two flags, which is from the show, I don't know if you can see in this, but one's glossy, one's matte. Very simple things are so, um, so generative in his work. 
And so I'd say that I love the fact that for John's, I don't really think printmaking is a technique. It's not, it's not setting out to get to an end product, but so much as a kind of process that he returns to, a kind of encounter, um, a kind of with materials. And I would argue also that John's brings in um, an encounter with a kind of productive strangeness, a kind of alienation of his own images to himself, a kind of blindness during the process and a kind of indirect touch. And maybe this is what I care about the most. Um, you know, so many people, Use this word about John's of reticence. That's a, that's a, a you know, was talked about Jasper John's being so cold, so reticent. I've always found his work to be really hot. Um, and I think what's at play in John's is really a kind of contact, um, a kind of indirect contact. This, I, I feel like the replication and the way that he, he moves things, especially in print, which is a very um, kind of intimate and fast space for him, there's a kind of obsession, there's a kind of intimacy of transference. and and projection. And this is something I really identify with. So I, I have done a lot of printmaking, but I want to talk about my other work, um, because I think that it's printerly in all of these ways. And I think in a way, everything is a kind of print in my work in a way that I, I feel is true about John. So, so let's take the next slide, and I'll, I'll move quickly here. Um, I'm going to focus on just one kind of way of working, which I've been doing for a little bit. Um, this is what I would call a painting. What I am doing is actually making a hand-painted negative. I'm using oil and canvas. And what you see on the left is the object I made, which generates the image on the right. I take it to the, to the dark room, I put light through it, and it prints. And so there's all kinds of ways in which I lose control in this process, or all kinds of ways in which I'm blind to the outcome. And I think um, what I want to think about here is this power of reversals, the way that that the work, the paint is happening on the matrix. You're working on the tool and not on the image in any kind of print. And I find that to be a powerful way to sort of let things slip out of your grasp and then they turn and they surprise you. And that, that is incredibly generative. Um, maybe the next slide. You know, and then I mentioned this idea of the specificity of materials. Um, I started working in that way and almost immediately I became more focused on the the status of that thing which I'm using as the negative, the status of the matrix, as it were. Um, and these are two works that just, I think, show my, my exploration of that, my curiosity about um, this kind of hybrid image object that is the stained fabric, that is the, the thing. It's, you know, in a way, making an image of the, of the thing that is generating the image and, and including that self-referentiality is a very, um, I don't want to claim that everything I do is very Johnsian, but that's a place where I feel a lot is going on in the John's show. And then, of course, the, the multiplicity. Um, let's have the next slide. You don't mind just the, the way that the way that things move, but also the way that in motion things change. Um, so a lot of my work is using the same materials, the same negative in this case, um, in different ways. These are these are produced in exactly the same way with exactly the same painting. And because of the way that the canvas is hanging, because of the way on the left I've moved it, because of what I've done with the light from the enlarger on the right, um, I'm able to discover within one image or even one object that I've made this kind of this unfolding of different potential energies and, and the different types of spaces they can land in. Um, I, I can't help but imagine that that's something that motivates John to come, John's to come back to the flag um, to see what it, what it also can be. Um, fourth slide, let's take the next one. Um, just to say that when I have made prints, I think I'm really interested in the capacity of printmaking to have a space that's both seen and unseen, the way the matrix disappears and the print continues. And so I've done things like um, what you're seeing on the left is a series of large etchings in which I would work on one side of the plate and then also print the back of the plate. So the abstract thing that you're seeing on the right is the kind of subconscious of the image. It's, it's the thing, it's the scratch and the wear and the tear of working on this giant plate that was my size and how that gets recorded you know, through the process and I don't see it and then I can pull it back out. Or the, or the other image we're looking at is um, a series of monoprints where I was uh, painting into pieces of linen, folding wet paper around them and using the press to draw the image out of both sides of the painting at the same time to see how the image can both, what happens if it unfolds and what happens if it's sort of, has a, has a strong center and, and kind of no center. Um, and then my last image is thinking about the way that um, for I think anybody who's ever tried to work with, with print in a very exploratory way, 
it's a kind of thick medium. It's a, it's a kind of medium of resistance. There's a, there's a series of, of challenges and material strangeness that, that come up. Um, I made this weird slide of, of, of work to show both how an image or a character or a motif can, can carry through and come back in my work um, and to think about the way that resistance of materials is, is, is a provocative kind of space. Um, those, those images on the right are what I'm working on um, this week, uh, right now, uh, which is using uh, oil paint in the, in the dark room to just draw on, on blank photo paper and then use the fact that the oil resists the water so to resist the developer and create this dialogue between letting go and holding on in the, in the, oil, in the, in the fight between oil and water to turn a drawing into an act of kind of balancing the needs of different materials. And um, that has always been my experience working in a print shop. And I think that that type of material encounter thinking is, is something that I find um, in John's prints and creeping over into his paintings. So I'm gonna stop there. I hope I haven't gone on for too long and um, look forward to talking to everyone. Hello, um, my name is Shabal Alasso and um, I'm really happy to be here tonight with Khalil and with Matt, um, both two artists that I really respect and it's great to be able to speak about our mutual you know, respect and love for the medium of printmaking. Um, I'm going to start with my first slide. Um, so I identify with a lot of the points that Matt made earlier, um, kind of um, relating to printmaking being this opportunity to lose control. Um, my first body of work that I remember being very proud of was a series of works that were made with collagraphic plates. And these are examples of those works. They're from this play about 10 years ago. Um, so you can see the work on the left baby doll. This was actually made from a matrix that was comprised of an old painting. So a painting that I had done in oil paint. And for those of you who are more familiar with oil painting, especially kind of like an undergraduate oil painting aesthetic, this was like a very, very gooped up full of lots of material, lots of paint. <laughs> and the painting itself wasn't very interesting or successful um, in my mind, but I knew that there was something interesting about the materiality of the object itself. Um, so in not being overly attached to the painting as a successful artwork, I decided that I wanted to cut it out and see if it could have better luck as a print matrix. And it did. Um, because of the different layers of oil paint that have dried and been sanded and reworked, the object itself had a lot of ridges and it also had a lot of valleys. So this allowed me to ink it up both in taglio style and also relief style. So allowing some of my printmaking paint to go deep into the matrix and some just to exist on the very tops of these peaks on the object. And I was able to create this image that was so much more complex, um, both formally and conceptually than the matrix that allowed for it. Um, so this led me down a road where I wanted to kind of mainly focus on printmaking, um, especially at the time, the age I was of making these works, I really needed this kind of like immediate um, finish, this immediate kind of gratification from my, my art making processes. Like painting can be so difficult, it's very, very challenging. Printmaking can be too, but there's just so many more chances. There's the immediacy to printmaking that doesn't really exist when you're dealing with like paintbrush to canvas. Um, the certain kind of investment that one needs to make in working in that way can be so complicated. Whereas when you're working in printmaking and you're working on a printing press, there's something that can happen almost instantaneously. And that's what really excited me about printmaking. Um, also, there are so many opportunities just to like try again. We can go to the next slide now, if possible. So my print series um, eventually led me to what I consider to be my painting practice today. Um, after working in this print, this print style for so many years, um, I realized that what I was investing a majority of my energy into was actually the plate making itself. So. I thought for a long time that it was the images that were 
kind of the product of me running the make pixies do the printing press that were the most exciting but after really unpacking the process i realized that i was putting the majority of my time and effort into building these super super complex calligraphic plates and these plates is, is what has led me to making the applique objects that now exist primarily in my paintings um, these objects today are comprised of like various materials um, materials that now are not so much focused on materials that can kind of lead to different textures but more just colors and forms so i wanted to show examples of these works in progress these are all images of paintings that are half finished semi-finished from my painting practice these are all from like a series of works i was creating in about 2019 and these works um work it was an idea for a magazine to kind of document my process and my painting process when I have a work that's in progress it's not it's kind of a work that's in pieces which I think a lot of printmakers can identify with kind of working with like various different objects that come together to create a sum that's larger um, than you know the individual parts um, and we can go to the next slide um, these are more examples of these kinds of works and looking at them, I do think that they have lots of similarities to printmaking plate, um, primarily just the layering. And I feel like layering and collage, printmaking and collage are almost are very, very connected. And if you can see that too in um, John's practice, a lot of his painting works have a, are just as much related to the conversation around collage as they are to printmaking. Um, I think that both those ways of working, both those genres of working in, a two, in two dimensions are, are, are kind of almost like, yeah, they're almost inextricable from one another. Um, next slide. Um, I wanted to show some examples of what my finished paintings look like um, to kind of give some context. Um, when I'm working on my paintings, so like when they're in progress, unlike I think more like a traditional painter, I'm not really I'm not really looking at my work on the wall or kind of straight up like in front of me. I'm most of the time I'm working on the floor and I'm kind of placing different parts of the figures, um, similarly to how someone would place printmaking plates down on a table for registration. So kind of allowing everything to move and shift accordingly and kind of playing around with the objects before they're, they're finally set. And I think because I had focused on printmaking for so long, I also became attached to having this machine or this mechanism that was an extension of my hand. And today, um, I'm no longer that connected to the printing press, but I still have this kind of machine, a machine that exerts pressure, a machine that creates this kind of line or has this ability that I wouldn't be able to do with my own physical hand. So the, the sewing machine for me is kind of my substitute for the printing press. It's something that allows me to have this ability outside of myself. And it's this, mach this machine that's like an it's like extension of my own, like my own body in terms of like making my work. Um, next slide. I included this image to kind of, to kind of talk about repetition and like what repetition means to me, because this is something I saw um, kind of come up a lot in the John's exhibition. I have a habit of making an original drawing and instead of working on the original because it's so precious to me, I'll photocopy it and kind of work on top of the Xeroxes. It's a way to see how many different ways can I do the same thing, which is kind of a conceptual concern for me within my practice. Um, so I wanted to include this series of drawings as like an example of that. And that's one of the things I really appreciate a lot about the John show, seeing these motifs from different years and often in different mediums, printmaking to painting to sculpture reappear. And then the meaning of these motifs kind of shift because of the medium that they're in, the year that they're made in, the color, the materials that they're made in. Um, I found that it's a very simple gesture or ostensibly the simple gesture, but it's actually very complex. And it can speak to how an individual or a society can truly imbue an object or a symbol with so much meaning, a meaning that can transform and kind of always be in flux. Next slide. Um, this is an example of what I just spoke about. Um, this work in particular, you kind of see this bronze sculpture and you also see the same exact image, the same exact motif um, as a model print, so. 
And this was the painting that stood out to me the most from the John show, partially because of the titling itself, I found really fascinating. Um, it's saying Harlem White, Harlem is the neighborhood that I'm from. That's mostly what drew me in initially. But apart from that, um, I was most excited about this painting because this painting also spoke to something that I truly identify with in my own practice, and which is the idea of painting as accumulation. So kind of understanding that when one is making a painting, what you're really doing is just putting different things in relation to one another. And that's how I've come to understand painting. And that's what painting has come to mean to me. And that's kind of the delineation I have between painting and printmaking. Because in many ways, they're not very different. They're both ways of image making that are you know, two-dimensional, often objects like this on the wall. But in printmaking, I feel like it's about one gesture, one moment. Um, one instance when lots of things come together. Whereas painting is, to me always speaks of more a durational process, a longer period of time when many things are coming together. Thank you. And my name is Khalil Robert Irving, and thank you so much for having me here. Thanks, Kim, for the invitation. And it's really great to be here with my colleagues. You guys have a lot more to add. Um, I come from mostly a sculpture background, so seeing Jasper John's works on paper uh, are, are is quite uh, exciting for me in looking at zero through nine from 1960 and the subsequent slides that I've collected here. I think I've chose like four or five. I'm, I'm really interested and captivated by how John's really use uh, printmaking as a, a mode for drawing and capturing uh, gesture uh, on a, in a plate of a lithograph or an etching. Then it accumulates uh, and we can go to the next slide into something that is, is, is complicatedly abstract, but also still very present. Where a gesture, uh, it can, uh, a lithograph is akin to drawing where it captures a gesture from one to the other, and then you can replicate it into more than one copies of the same thing. But it also allows for a registration or the, the capacity for a certain amount to be present a lot faster uh, than necessarily the additive process of adding paint to a canvas or making a sculpture. You really can sit there, you can do it, and then you can see many uh, come from that, um, that device. Uh, and we can go to the next one. And through the years and looking through all of John's prints, you can see the gesture of applying or application or an amassment of an experience over um, from the black and white prints to the colors or the prints with multiple colors where you can see texture uh, be resolved or explored uh, kind of um, in a more dynamic way than the painting. And then you start to see the painting uh, fold some of the same gestures or the prints from the painting back and forth. And I think that is something that's really exciting to me where when looking through John's oeuvre of work and experience as an artist from the outside, there's a lot of room for play on that he has allowed for himself to where the work may be uh, right now in 2023, may be understood as an older artist coming from the mid 20th century but for someone or for myself, it's very exciting to see the breadth of the possibility of what he's been able to achieve and arrive at in a diverse amount of material. And go to the next one. And I've just really captivated how he can work with the printmaker, lay down color, make a dynamic image, and then takes those things back uh, to the studio and continues to be um, inspired by and reflecting on and go to the next one and for my prints i started making prints in 2015 working for island press at washington university in st louis which invites a print an artist to come to campus every semester and students can interact with that artist to create works that then the master printer tom reed and uh, students or other 
staff of the press will start to then create an edition and then those editions go out into the world and are sold and uh, presented at fairs and things like that and during the day I would make prints with Tom Reed and at night I would go into the print shop and fuck shit up <laughs> and this large three by eight foot uh, print that is now uh, in the Whitney's collection is a uh, is a kind of a, a uh, an extension of that experience uh, seven years ago, and thinking about the the issue of uh, applying a, a form or a texture or a shape or a gesture on a plate and then seeing a quick resolve on the surface of a piece of paper, this print has like four or five layers on it initially, starting with the base layer of a few bands of color, and in the distance you see the red, black, and green reference to the United Negro uh, flag, the UNIA flag or the Black Nationalist flag. And the, there are objects also collaged onto the paper that are absorbing or accepting ink um, and that are being embedded uh, in the layers of the ink applied. Someone in the Q&A asked, or in the question answer box asked, what is a matrix? A matrix is the, is the panel or the plate at which the ink is applied to. And for me, my plate is Centra. And Centra is a thin sheet of PVC that a lot of people mount photographs to, but I've been using it and what I was learning in school from faculty and printmaking uh, staff at the university is that Centra is easily uh, embossed. And so the possibility of a photographic uh, nature or a, a more dimensional print is possible. Whereas a lot of John's prints are flat, he uh, imbues them with a lot of the possibility of depth. And, and here, I think some of the things maybe like a quarter inch deep, and so the resolve and the possibility of three-dimensionality is also uh, present and is very exciting for me. Uh, and I haven't been making prints, but I am looking forward to being able to get a press one day and keep making more uh, sculptural works like this one. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, and thanks also to the audience members. We, I see we already have some great questions coming in, um, which we will get to shortly. Um, I wanted to actually pick up with one of the questions that did come in from the audience, which was the question that I've been thinking about um, around this question of the, the plate and the matrix, kind of how that functions um, for each of you in your work. and. I think you've all, um, you know, I think it's fascinating to think um, for you, um, Shabalala, how the, it was actually the holographic plate itself in a, almost in a sculptural way as an object that leads you into um, the applique painting um, and thinking about you, Matt, and thinking about like the verso of the plate that, that all of you and Khalil, I think in your practice too, you're all there's there's a real um, deep thinking around this notion of the matrix and what it means. It's not just a given. It's not just a plate that you're um, etching or a block of wood that you're carving into. So I was hoping that maybe we could kind of dig into that um, a bit further. Um, and I hope all of you actually have different things to say about that. I mean, I, uh, I, I want to play with uh, when things can be recognizable or not recognizable. And also that new movie called The Matrix so is like the fourth movie. It's like another kind of play. Like, can you have a visual play, a mental play, emotional and physical play all in one? And making prints really uh, is kind of like a fun place to be because it's so intuitive or of the moment. And then you have something that may be rigid or flexible or hard or kind of like in a, of a moment's notice, you really have to kind of adjust to at that time. It, it's really exciting. It makes things, I mean, I can think a little bit more fun too. So I, I don't, I think I'm gonna keep using Syndra for a little while as a, as a place to start. I hadn't realized those were Sintra, and I think that's I, well. I they're paper. 
but that the, the matrix is Sintra. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in a way, there's, there's a holographs and so, so is Chaba's work. And I think that there's something, um, you know, I think a lot of people have moved a kind of unusual type of plate into the print studio very self-consciously, like this is a print made from this object. And, and that's been a productive space in printmaking. But I love that, that both of you, and I guess me too, in some ways, are just taking that as a matter of fact thing, that we're making these strange things that then function as a plate. So I found that to be really strong. And I, I really responded, um, Chaba, to that impulse to turn your painting into the holograph. I think that I actually find, uh, I find painting very stressful because of the end point, knowing when it's done, <laughs> putting all your eggs in that basket and the basket's kind of full and you don't want to give up on it. And so for me, moving to the, the photographic way of working was like decentering the painting, moving the painting into being just a tool for generating other work, which then freed up this, this, like, this freeness, this freedom with, with the paintings. And I have a harder time in a real print shop working with a copper plate because there the investment is back. So I think my impulse to print the back of the plate is partially to like get around <laughs> the front being the only thing. Um, and I, so I love that, that sense of moving the painting into something that can then be a waypoint to something else. That there's something very freeing about, about shifting the hierarchies and that, that we're all kind of working in some way with, with like back and forth between object and matrix that, is, that I find fascinating. Yeah, for, I mean, for me, um, the kind of printmaking that I really gravitated towards wasn't like a, you know, intaglio etching or it wasn't wood block. I really liked making, I primarily like working in model printing and model type. So that kind of goes back to the immediacy of it and also they shift to, to painting. And also I like to make my own plates. So I was just able to get these kinds of textures and in some instances, almost a photographic realism with kind of inking up this material and getting it to look almost exactly like it did in my hand on this flat, completely like no, like this object that has like no dimension to it. And I was really into that with printmaking, having, a, having that illusion, something that I knew was completely flat, but looks like it had all this cult, like this depth to it, this texture. That was a big part of it for me, the, the illusion building that was available to me in printmaking. Um, and I was looking at some of the questions and some people were saying that for, they always associated immediacy with painting. And I, I think that it depends on what kind of paintings you make. I think there are some kind of like super expressionistic paintings, um, modernist paintings that people do kind of imagine that they're coming together in these instants. But I think that for people who, I just like painting in terms of its scale, its relationship to the body, is a completely different endeavor, I think, than working um, on, a, on a work on paper, working with the press. There's so many more, there's so many more constraints in that environment. And those constraints, I think, for me have always been super generative, but I identify with that feeling that a painting is something that is always gonna be laborious, physically laborious, um, psychologically. And it's always this feeling of like risk involved of, in the investment and then the possible payoff. Like, is this gonna be something that I feel like is meaningful, it's something that's gonna be successful. Whereas when a, when a print, if you do everything right, if everything's lined up correctly, if everything's inked up correctly, if you prepared properly, in an instant, you'll know whether or not it was a success. Whereas a painting, I feel like, never comes together in an instant. Um, Isn't that kind of the magic of prints, that they're strange with time? That the, the plate, if you're actually making a kind of etching, the plate takes so much time and then it moves so quickly. There's this kind of, I, I like to think of it as kind of potential energy, like you're investing all this labor into this thing, which then releases it all at once. And that kind of velocity is so exciting when you, when you find it. And I wanted to say something too about like the holograph as a, like as a technique, I think a lot of people know it or use it but I don't think it's necessarily as explored as, as, as like as expansively as it possibly could. It was like a holograph is a, is a texture adhered to a plate that then the texture is what's resolved or transferred to the paper. And so if your paper is dry, it will have a tension in it that will absorb or not absorb ink in a certain way. But if the paper is wet, it then dimensionalizes, if you're using the right kind of felt, it'll dimensionalize around whatever form is adhered 
I actually, someone asked in the Q and in the questions, uh, the relationship between the matrix and the, the items that I'm using, I don't necessarily glue my pieces or the, co the collaged objects to the Centra, I glue it to the paper. So then the Centra has the impression and the paper has the object, whereas then I can print the Centra one more time in Talio or um, Relief to where it then can have the presence or the absence of an object. Um, but then if the paper is wet, it goes into the crevices where I use rocks to make the texture. Sometimes I drive over my plates outside on the road so it gets the texture of the street, but then I have another way to make the real pebbly texture. But the collagraph also, when you, when you pull, instead of gluing and you pull the object off and you let the plate live, the plate can also be a reference to the photograph. It has like a kind of like, uh, in, like you're talking about the gesture of doing, it has an investment of a certain kind of pressure that then also resolves itself similar to an exposure. Like the pre can pressure be akin to exposure? Um, this is great. I love talking about collagraphs because I think they do have a way of kind of pushing against some of the ways that we think about um, making prints. And something that I remember you mentioning in an earlier conversation, Shabalala, was that you know you maybe first turned to. Um, thinking about collagraphs because of the this sort of limitation of the of the printing plate, as it were, um, and I think that that is something that you know, many many artists have have talked about. I was beginning to think also about um, with you know technical limitations around printmaking and the sort of the machines that we use, the the scale that we can operate on. Um, thinking about Khalil, you you know working at Island Press and being able to have like the right size. Um, presses to be able to work at a larger scale. So I was wondering if, if um, you all had more to talk about in relation to um, the kind of the mechanics around printmaking and how certain, um, how I think all of you have found ways to almost um, think about these interesting interplays between materials and these and these mechanisms, um, kind of creating a tension or playing with the tension or the perceived limitations within them. Um, well, for me, um, I actually moved away from printmaking because I felt like there was um, some limitation in terms of scale and material. And material. Um, also too, I kind of stopped doing it around the same time that I no longer had access to a print shop. Now that I'm um, at a point where I do have access to a print shop again, I'm starting to get back into printmaking. But printmaking has a lot to do with you know, the technology that's involved and the access to the machines. So I guess in some ways it's, it's kind of similar culturally to like photography or filmmaking. There's a whole culture around the, the technology that's involved in making it. Um, so without the technology, you can't fully participate in the medium. Um, and I think that's, I don't think that takes anything away from it. I think it actually adds to it being a real I don't know, it's like a real philosophy. It's a real way of training yourself and training your body and training your mind into like thinking about how to make images, how to make artworks, how to make art, how to make art objects. And once you've kind of been in that culture for a period of time, I think you kind of carry that into a, whatever other medium you might work in in the future. So even though I spent a long period of time not doing any printmaking, I still feel like I applied a lot of the tenets of printmaking to my painting practice. And I kind of ran my, studio similarly to how I would have, well, in college, I was like the print shop monitor, so so much of how I monitored the shop and kind of just a certain kind of way of conducting yourself in the studio that I felt like is all, my, for myself is more aligned with how one would act in a print shop than a traditional painting studio. Um, I mean, I, I love hearing that because I think everybody's got a different relationship to, um, to, to, how, to, how, to how they work. And you know, I, I what I find to be tricky about the technology of printmaking is is the print shop and the people. It's the collaborative quality of it. It's it's a, such a different space than the space in my studio where I always work alone. And so yes, I, I think that when I've been I, I I do all of my my print my 
my non-technical making work, all my photographs and painting, other things here and, and in my own studio. And I go to a professional print shop to work in copper. And, and when I'm in that space, you're up against a kind of material world that is strange. You know, there's a giant aquatint box that's the size of a Volkswagen and it turns around and around. And I immediately want to put the biggest plate that I can find into that box to make the biggest noise that it will make. And you sort of respond to these things, but to me, they're not about medium specificity so much as just being in a different kind of space. And I've always tried to avoid being in a space where I feel like I've got to learn the right way to do it. You know, it's like the kind of camera club idea where what can, what can, what I always thought could screw me up in photography was caring about the camera too much and, and becoming lost in, in the technical side. So I try to get into printmaking in a, in a stranger way, but actually what has been the strangest is that, that presence of the, of the, of the technical expertise of the, of the print people in the print studio and, and finding ways to work collaboratively um, to, to push off of, of different people's skills and also different people's blind spots is, is actually, I think, what has, has pushed the work in strange directions um, for me. I, since getting home to St. Louis and moving back from New York City, I uh, got a big old studio and I'm working on the like 8,000 square foot warehousey space of it that's unheated and, un well, it's heated, but it's not cooled. Uh, and I, I plan to have me a nice big 20 foot bed printing press here because I I don't come to printmaking with the desire to like go to the big shop that you can like produce copper plates. I'm like kind of like turned off by that. And someone asked about John's innovative press process and practice. And I love working with printers. Like I love working with people who have technical skill because they're just pretty amazing with like there's a guy who lives near Hudson who's like one of the best photogravier people in the country and he's like so badass and I worked with him at Art Oh My when I was a resident there and but I was just like I want to make I want it I want it to be different than that and there's so much work that we can see through history that performs this certain kind of media specificity that is there a way that I can keep making that can continue to uh, reveal more to me than um, enacting a process that has a certain resolve and reveal, which is still very exciting because when I mean, I remember seeing your exhibition at the St. Louis Art Museum and I was like blown away and like captivated by the way you could create texture, visual texture. And almost you have some, in some of your prints, there is so much noise and some of it's like very sweet and then some of it's very loud, but it still fits within the image that you're constructing that it then doesn't, it doesn't, it's not hurtful noise which is really nice and and very beautiful it was beautiful within those three galleries in the new the david Shipperfield building of the st louis art museum so i want to i want to make uh prints on canvas one day i make so much on paper but i also think about archivability whereas things on paper have to be glazed and like the big work at the whitney uh, you know, I don't know how long the cardboard will last or the glue on the cardboard or the glue that I use to put the objects on the paper underneath the ink in those pieces. So is there a way to keep having fun with it? And I even going to make some glass top tables in my workshop so that I can roll my ink out and everything. But I and also working for Island Press, I'm great at as being a worker bee. So like when someone tells me what to do, I can do it. And uh, I think it was very exciting to see what Tom Reed can do and what Lisa Belowski can do in terms of making prints. But for me, I think I don't want to be limited by material technologies, but I am limited by material technologies because of the other materials that I use. So I kind of just bite the bullet and just pay the money and get the equipment that I want and don't let it be a hindrance or a, um, an impediment. Shabalala, did you have anything to um, add about, I, I noticed that we actually had a couple of, um, you know, Matt, you, you brought up this question of collaboration and working in a print shop, um, both in terms of the, um, the kind of material capacity there, but also that the people. 
Um, and I was wondering, you know, how you know, so much of your work, your or the, the collagraphs you were making earlier, you were doing on your own, as far as I understand. Um, but you have also worked with print shops. So I was curious to, to hear from you also a bit about um, that dynamic and, and the differences in working on your own versus working um, outside of your own space. Um, well, I think that Khalil, I think you're talking about Lothar Ostenberg, who's like a master photogravier artist. He was actually my professor at Bard and he does live up here in Red Hook, New York. And he was a person that I took the majority of my printmaking classes with. And I would say he's probably the individual that really introduced me to printmaking, him and Ken Bueller, who's another faculty at Bard College. Um, he's the person that really kind of got me involved in model printing. And I remember, I guess a lot of my associations with printmaking has to do with the institution and school and like academia, because that's the first time I was exposed to the medium. And I do remember that kind of camaraderie in the shop, which in some ways did make it seem like a medium that allowed for more flexibility, less error, um, especially as a young artist, as opposed to the solitude of your single studio, especially when you're first starting out and you're still, you kind of still need so much of that feedback and peer kind of support and camaraderie to feel like this is even a path you wanna go down. The path I'm referring to is just a path of dedicating your life to art making. So in some ways, the again, the culture of printmaking, it kind of creates this community just even in the making of the works and learning how to make the works, there are rules and you have to kind of be guided, you have to be taught. And there are people who are, they completely know how to make these things perfectly and you can make it perfectly. And there's a reward for making it perfectly. Whereas painting, those kinds of constraints don't really exist. Um, in painting almost, the goal is to deconstruct to make something that is anti or to make something that is um, nonsensical, you know, to make sense is almost not even a goal sometimes of painting. So it's nice to understand those kind of dichotomies and like philosophies in terms of, you know, approaching image making. And I think I've, I'm happy to have spent so much time around people who would identify as printmakers and also have spent so much time with people who identify as painters and having had um, mentors and teachers who come from both those worlds. So in school and on my own, when I had access to a print shop, um, I was making a lot of things on my own. Um, but now I do work with like a, with print shops. So right now I'm working with two palms, for example, to create um, a couple of different projects. And that's, this is a new experience for me kind of coming in as an artist, making works with the print house. Um, when I was younger, I often worked in the summers, I interned at the summer that pays prints. So I remember kind of being on the other side, the intern, like doing, <laughs> working on the Leonardo review, cat and paper cast and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> now it's kind of a different experience kind of being the artist that comes in. And again, I, I it's a whole nother perspective, but it, I, the thing that's the commonality is just the, the amount of people, the amount of people who have such strong skill sets and can kind of zero in on this one aspect and how many people it takes to create this object that looks as if it, um, you know, came into its own so el like elegantly and effortlessly. So that's always a really interesting experience. And that kind of magical experience is what exists in the realm of printmaking. Someone asked about like abandoning the idea of making additions as the primary ethos of our printmaking and moved into the idea of using the matrix as a kind of another means of working. I would love to hear, uh, Matt, if you share, if you, how do you feel about this between the space of making copper editions and also making works in other dynamic ways? Yeah, I don't, I don't make many editions. And I feel like when I do, I try to think about what that what that limitation is. It's just another type of material to think about that kind of repetition. Um, I, uh, I don't think any, I, none of us seem to be that invested in the idea of, of the destination of print being an addition. It seems to be um, kind of a process. And I, I feel like that's something you see in John's too. You have a real sense that he has a home studio. You, know, you have a sense that there's a print shop there and he's finding things and sometimes they get printed in numbers, but that type of printmaking space I think is really important to keep open for anybody working in print. 
sorry, Kim, not to take over the moderary position. I don't, I don't personally like making additions when I'm in the shop myself because I'm like moving things in and out, moving things off and off, often on the table to where it's like, if I have a four by four foot plate, I can make like as many prints off that plate as I want and they will all be different. Just because it's like, as long as I have another pair of hands to help clean and roll ink, we can be making these like collagraph prints all damn day. Uh, but I think one thing about the the addition part of printmaking that is like interesting is it's also is, to go back to it is, is its closeness to photography. The repetition of the print and the addition is like it can get to the photographic or the representational in a very interesting way that then could be capturing a more conceptual uh, structure that would be exciting for, for the content. And so I've been trying to find a printmaker who I could work with who is good at silkscreen. And because uh, the silkscreen is like, is a very uh, funny and complicated place that uh, there's a lot more to explore. How do you feel like working with uh, with between the different presses that you've worked with, Shaba, that uh, what you feel like you've been able to do and maybe not necessarily able to do based on what the spaces uh, have available or don't have available? Well, when I was working by myself, I wasn't inclined to like making additions. I, I was doing these unique prints, but working with the um, with working with the press, you, is more likely that you're going to make an addition because they have the ability um, to just kind of make the same thing multiple times. And I feel like oftentimes it's hard for an individual artist, especially an artist that works in so many different kinds of mediums, I think like all of us do, to kind of hold yourself to that, to kind of have that, to exert that kind of, um, I guess, discipline over yourself to say, okay, I'm going to make the same thing, not once, not twice, not three times, but 25, 30 times. times. They also make artist proofs that look exactly the same as well. I mean, it's kind of a hard thing to hold an individual maker to do it. That's why it's nice to have a group of people who are holding one another accountable to do that. So that's why I have a print shop. <laughs> because but, how very you like, but how do you feel the difference between pace prints and two palms or, um, or the classroom studio versus... Mm -hmm. I mean, oh yeah, well, I think as a student, I mean, it's a completely different thing. It's all about like, expert, you know, exploitation <laughs> and then learning and kind of really understanding and developing like a reverence for the, for the um, medium, kind of understanding the technology, understanding the history, understanding how it can be a tool, like another tool in your toolbox um, of ways to express yourself kind of, um, you know, make your ideas something that people can view and interact with. Um, I think once an artist gets to the point where they're working with a print shop to make work, it's about then sharing your work with a larger audience. So kind of working with this different kind of institution, um, institution that produces work to make, to make a, like a, an addition of something that many people can interact with. And all of these people, will get the same exact thing. So it's kind of a wall hauling idea. So kind of wall hall said, it's a matter you have a million dollars or if you have one dollar, Coke is still a Coke, you know? So when you can make this addition of works and so many different people can have access to it and it's the same exact work, there's a certain power in that that I think, again, is very different than the way people interact with painting. Um, it kind of democratizes art in a way. And I think that print makes relationship to new to print and news, um, and like kind of print makes relationship to books and printing of newspapers and letterpress and all that. It's kind of tied up. And again, the culture of printmaking is something that's meant to be somehow democratic, somehow informative, somehow educational. So. Um, I am so sad to be the one to have to um, wrap this up at this point. I feel like the time just flew by, um, but I wanted to thank you all so much for this conversation. I feel like we've left, um, you've all put so much on the table, so many things to think about further. Um, and I think, you know, I like that we ultimately ended talking, you know, amongst 
the three of you who have largely worked in printmaking, in making unique works, ended with this, an interesting conversation and thinking about what additions can mean and what they can be in the world. Um, so um, thank you again, everyone. And thank you so much to our audience members for your wonderful questions. Um, hopefully we will all be able to um, convene at some point in person and have these conversations again. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you.